Hello everybody, I'm Dave. And I'm Jacob. And today we're going to be looking at NVIDIA's latest graphics card, the GTX 1070 Ti. With its slim market gap, this card is expected not only to go head to head with AMD's RX Vega 56, but also chomp down at NVIDIA's own GTX 1080. Yeah, nom nom nom. And the stats are in, the opinions have been made, and we're going to be checking out how the GTX 1070 Ti stacks up against the crowded competition. <laughs> The GTX 1070 Ti launch was leakier than a bargain basement rubber dinghy. That means all the specs had landed on our desk long before Nvidia's official launch. So that means we already knew that the card features only a very slightly cut down GP104 GPU. Uh, and that it was only missing a single streaming multiprocessor compared to the full fat version. And that means it's got 2,432 CUDA cores in it compared to the GTX 1080's 2,560. So it's basically just a GTX 1080 then, right? Well, no. NVIDIA also went about replacing the 10 gigabit per second GDDR5X memory with GDDR5. Thanks to this memory switcheroo, the GTX 1070 Ti's powerful GPU is fenced off by limited memory bandwidth. NVIDIA also threw a spanner in the work for third-party graphics card manufacturers. In what looks like a move to satiate the GTX 1070 Ti's silicon hunger, they've nixed any and all factory overclocking at launch. As far as we know, this overclocking ban is not going to be lifted anytime soon, which means that all those sleep fan and heatsink designs aren't going to net you zero benefit over the reference design, unless of course you overclock it yourself. So this is where it gets a little bit more interesting. For all the limitations of the manufacturers, you can still overclock the card yourself. Phew! So, with the clock speeds tweaked up and the memory messed around with, we can actually see what this car can do. So let's get into the benchmarks. Let's get into the benchmarks! <laughs> At the reference clock speeds, the GTX 1070 Ti manages to score around, on average, 16% better than the GTX 1070 across our benchmarking suite. With a price bump of only $50, the 1070 Ti offers a mild increase to the price performance metric over its smaller sibling. At reference speeds, however, this card is a far cry from the GTX 1080 Cannibal we were all hoping for but a little tweaking under the hood should close that gap a little further. With a pretty impressive offset of plus 225 MHz and plus 445 MHz offset on the memory clock, we managed to squeeze in another $50 worth of performance from our Founders Edition. The extra graphical grunt gave the GTX 1070 Ti a 32% lead in performance across the board compared with the GTX 1070. As long as you aren't scared of a little overclocking, that is. Which you shouldn't be. Then the price performance ratio of this card shoots way up. The card never quite turned into a GTX 1080 Slayer, likely at the memory's expense. The considerable memory bandwidth reduction from 320GB per second to 256GB per second means that texture-intensive games such as Shadow of War were likely affected by a memory bottleneck. So while we were able to push our car to quite a hefty overclock, this may not always be possible with your own chips. Every purchase of a GTX 1070 Ti comes with a free ticket to the Silicon Lottery, and unfortunately for some, not everyone's a winner. I hope you have your lucky rabbit foot to hand. The more expensive MSI GTX 1070 Ti Gaming fared worse than our reference design, despite improved power delivery and cooling. In fact, the card only managed an offset of plus 150 MHz on the core clock, leaving the card with a bark a little worse than its bite. We did manage to push the memory clock a little further to plus 490 MHz, however this didn't equate to much in the way of real-world performance. <laughs> If you're in the market for a new graphics card and you can't wait till Nvidia's next gen, whenever the hell that turns up, then the GTX 1070 offers you a few more frames for your budget than you could have mustered a few months back. And if you aren't afraid of a little harmless tinkering, however, you can unlock this card's true potential. With a little extra speed under the hood, you get great bang for your buck. And with enough extra pep to drive decent frame rates at 1440p. There is only one caveat, however. This card slots into a rather slim gap in the market, priced at $449, right in between the GTX 1070 at $399 and the GTX 1080 at $549 MSRP. This leaves the GTX 1070 staring down the barrel of a possible price assassination by one of its siblings at any point. And that's because you can often find cheap GTX 1080s for around $500, and that's a difficult offer to refuse, especially when third-party GTX 1070 Ti cards with fancy cooling can get up to around $500 on their own. And so if you're looking to stretch your budget a little, you can get a lot more performance with just a little extra money. On the other hand, picking up a bargain GTX 1070 would still be plenty for solid 1440p gaming. Either way, it's bad news for TI sales. So the actual reasoning for this card's existence was a bit of a mystery before launch. And now that we've got the cards in our hand, well, it's still a bit of a mystery. Whether or not this card was intended to make the most of a GDDR5X shortage or to combat AMD's RX Vega 56, it's still not abundantly clear even after launch. So maybe those NVIDIA engineers really were just a bit bored. 
If you like what you've seen, then check out the rest of the channel. Plus, we've got full GTX 1070 Ti benchmark and review on the website, pcgamesend.com. Cool. Thanks for watching. Thanks.